So let's bring Chemco in here. Whoops. Rescue the Embassy Mission. This game's kind of an anomaly to me. It's like one of the most consistently inexpensive NES games I can find online, and no one talks about it. It seems, I, I think it's kind of that mentality of, oh, it's the most inexpensive thing on the menu. Let's ignore that and go with the second most inexpensive thing so we don't look entirely cheap. So we're just gonna ignore it or something because no one talks about this game. And it's a damn shame because it's kind of an awesome hidden gem that is easily accessible and readily available to anyone who's collecting for the NES, and it is a remarkably ambitious little title. So we're going to talk about it today, and also not just because I have a full playthrough and it means that I get a relatively quick and easy review out of this, but that is a bonus to all this as well. Now the plot to rescue the embassy mission. So stop me if I'm going too fast. There is an embassy, you are on a mission, and you have to rescue people. That's it. Um. Yeah, brevity is kind of the strength of this game in pretty much all regards, and to a point kind of a weakness as well. There really isn't a ton of plot here, but it is a fairly simplistic, at least narratively speaking, NES game. It's not crystallist grade complex storytelling. This is a very simple kind of sort of action game, but again, the focus of this game I think was mostly on the gameplay, and I think in that regard it is very ambitious and succeeds. So the gameplay to this is, it takes place in four separate stages that all play kind of like different games altogether. I think the best way I could describe this would be like an NES equivalent of Rainbow Six. In fact, if you saw my stream of this, that's pretty much what I called it, and that's kind of what it is. Your overarching goal is to infiltrate an embassy, shoot the aggressive people who are holding the ambassadors hostage, rescue the ambassadors, and get out of there, bing, bang, boom. But it's a little more complicated than that. Like I said, this game takes place over four phases, so we're gonna go at them one at a time. Phase one is infiltration, kind of. Well, well, it's it's more positioning than infiltration, but it's it's really the infiltration-y aspect of this game. Basically, you have your three snipers hanging around outside about a block away from the embassy. You have to sneak them up to their ready positions at the building at the end of the block without being spotted and shot and brutally killed or else you have no snipers and it's, well, let's just put it this way. If your sneaky stealth snipers are shot, pretty much everyone at SWAT school is gonna make fun of them for it. So um, let's keep these guys alive. So the idea is that there's constantly going to be little searchlights scanning the area and you have to keep your snipers out of those searchlights. The idea is that you can crawl under them or hide in the background, either in doorways in the shadows, as well as the like planter boxes, and just don't get shot and get to the end of the block. It's a relatively simple control scheme that just uses the directional pads with down and up being hide or crawl underneath a searchlight, and that's about it. It's simple enough, but it does have a little bit of an issue. While I think the stealth aspects are relatively good, the detection on the spotlights themselves are a little bit odd. Like, conceptually, you're supposed to stay out of the spotlight so you don't get shot at. Okay, that's fair. And if you do get spotted, that doesn't mean that you're instantly dead. People will shoot at you, but that doesn't mean they'll hit you. They're not exactly 100% dead-eye accurate, which I kind of appreciate it. It gives you a little bit of margin for error. What I don't like, though, is that the searchlights can spot you even if you're not in them. Like, they have a hit detection of about 50% the size of the actual spotlight itself, which means that you gotta be a little bit proactive innovating, and you have a lot less time to get around them than you might necessarily assume you do. In fact, this is one of the more difficult and unforgiving chunks of this game I found, personally. Once you get your snipers into position, we enter phase two, which is the sniping aspect of this game. Basically, your snipers are stationed around the building and they have to highlight little windows where the hostage takers are, and you can take them out. And if you do, presumably that means you have less of a problem later on because there's less aggressors. It's pretty neat, and I have to admit, there's actually quite a lot of detail in this. Like, it's not as simple as putting your cursor on the enemy and killing them, because this game actually factors in your sniper's breathing and actually creates a bit of a scope wobble, making your accuracy go down a little bit. It does make shooting a little bit more random than it probably should, but I will say it's a nice little touch. 
that just shows that people were really trying to make something cool and special with this game. Now, assuming that your snipers are done, you can hop into the repelling phase, and this completely screwed me up a whole bunch of times, because it's confusing. To repel, you have to press down, but if you press down too much, you repel too quickly and you fall to your death, and you leave a rather unflattering paste on the sidewalk. And once again, your classmates at the SWAT school are gonna say bad things about you, so don't do that. No, instead you have to press down, and then up, then down, then up, then down, then up. And in doing so, you effectively avoid making your characters look like me the first time I went rock climbing. True story. But the nice thing is, once you get to a window, you can jump in and smash through and begin the action phase. But before we get to that, there is a nice little extra feature to this. You aren't obligated to actually jump into the first window you see. You can actually start on the second or third floor. Well, first floor, you start from the top, of course, because you're repelling down the building. But you don't have to jump into the top floor. You can go in anywhere you want, you know, provided you don't fall to your death. Again, repeating my first time rock climbing, it was wildly embarrassing. But there didn't seem to be a lot of point to this. I never actually did it myself in gameplay, but there really didn't seem to be an overarching point to this. There, there's no real tactical benefit to it because you have to go through all the different floors and empty out every aggressor anyway. So there's not really a reason to. You can do it though, which is kind of nice. Anyway. You've now activated the fourth phase, which is the tactical combat phase, which is third-person shooting mode. Yeah! Basically, you go room from room, hallway to hallway, tracking the map to figure out exactly where your opponents are, presumably on a map that's updated by visuals from your snipers in real time. This game was made in the 80s. What the hell? Uh, okay. Anyway, you've got a real-time map updated by your snipers, I guess, and you have to run around killing every hostile in there and saving all the people inside. And if you can do this, congratulations, you and your team are awesome super war hero people who saved some ambassadors and avoided some kind of international incident. Awesome. Or you may have splattered your people on the ground repelling and then you have to go to the hospital and people say bad things about your squad. Or potentially even worse, you may have shot the ambassadors, in which case people will say a lot of really bad things about you. Not just, oh, look at that idiot who fell face first into the pavement. No, no. Look at that guy who completely did the opposite of his job. That's, uh... You're probably not going to be asked to do any more squad infiltrations with a SWAT team anymore. That would be unfortunate, so let's avoid that outcome, shall we? And, um, that's the game. It's it's really more like four really short mini-games that all play completely different, but act as a unified whole game, and I love that. But now we kind of go back to the start of, about how this game's biggest strength is its brevity. And in this case, it's weakness. See, that's that's it. That's the one level. This game only has one level. When you start the game, you have multiple difficulties and other augmentations and ranks you can select for your characters, which basically just adds more enemies and makes it harder to win, but it's the same level over and over. When you walk your snipers to the end of the road for every character, it's going to be the exact same building, even though I assume it's supposed to be like one block on each side of the building or something. When you go and snipe people, it's gonna be the exact same thing. It's not gonna be like, well, some of the windows are blacked out and you have to, like, use infrared to, like, figure out where, like, secret security devices inside are for your infiltration team or something. There's there's no swapping between your infiltration team and your sniping team to help them out in real time and swap between them to cover their flanks or get the AI to take some guy out who just happens to jump in front of a window or anything. Once you're in, you're kind of in. And really, that's the biggest shame of this game, is it's a brilliantly conceived game that is ridiculously ambitious, but at the same time, it feels like a ambitious tech demo like this is the stuff we can do and in this game we can show that we can and in our next game we'll do it on a bigger scale with more interactivity and more features and stuff maybe more than one level and maybe a few more embassies or something but it never happens this game is one level long and if a short game is not to your taste this is definitely gonna bug you but that said even though it's not a particularly long game the experience and every individual bit of it is very enjoyable and it doesn't wear out its welcome 
them. But because every chunk of this game is very short, but also very uncomplicated, it doesn't end up feeling very, very samey. I think as it is, if this game was stretched out any longer, it would definitely wear out its welcome. It'd be like every different phase of this would feel like the previous ones. They kind of understood that they only had so many features and mechanics and complications to its design, so they kept it short. And while it means the game itself is not going to be very long, it is still a fun and enjoyable experience. And it's relatively well polished, again, barring those weird spotlights and the kind of awkward, unexplained controls for repelling. So if this game looks fun gameplay-wise, it absolutely is. It just won't last you a long time. This is the kind of game you pop into your NES, play it once or twice, put it away, pick it up a couple months later, play it again, and it's a blast in that regard, but it's not gonna give you a long form hours and hours of unpaused content. So just keep that in mind if you're going into this expecting like a really long game, you're gonna be heavily disappointed, but for the cost and the amount of innovation and the fact that it's actually a pretty well polished experience, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Now the overall presentation to rescue the embassy mission is really damn good. I think the sprite work is really, really nice. Has a ton of really nice features. The behind the back view of your character is quite nice when you infiltrate the sort of sniping segment, really well detailed. I, I quite like how this game looks. Again, it's not trying to do anything super, super fancy, but what it does do, it polishes to a shine and that's really appreciated because again, it's not a long game and if they're not gonna make their game long, they have to make what they have good. And I think they did from a visual perspective. Audio wise, yeah, it's it's not bad. I remember thinking the music tea infiltration scene was really quite nice. Although it's not something that's gonna be terribly memorable. I mean, I'm talking about it right now and I remember saying to myself, you know, this, this infiltration third person shooting mode, this is some great music, but honestly, I'm having trouble remembering what that actual tune was. I'm gonna have to boot up my copy again just to listen to it again, but it was really, really good. Just not super memorable. Overall, the presentation is, I'd say it's good, definitely, but it's, it's not like top tier NES amazing. Now, if you want a copy of Rescue, the Embassy Mission, cheapest one I'm seeing on eBay right now, $13, shipping included. Like I said, this game isn't super expensive and it's readily available and I'm genuinely shocked that not more people talk about this because it is a great, fun little game. It's it's not an earth-shattering time. It's not a super long game. It's, it's not going to completely envelop your life in its amazing story and gameplay or anything, but you know what? It is a damn ambitious game with multiple modes of play that actually work really well together to tell a giant cohesive story about your squad and the embassy they're trying to rescue. I think this is a great game, and if you're trying to collect NES games, well, this one's readily available. No one talks about it and it is kind of a gem. And if nothing else, it's an interesting game that's readily available to fill out your collection. If you're looking for NES games, if you're looking for interesting NES games that are ambitious and fun, look no further than Rescue the Embassy Mission. Just, you know, maybe practice some rock climbing first. It's it's all I'm gonna say. It was embarrassing and you don't want to repeat that. Trust me, I, I had to do that in front of my whole high school. It was bad. Don't do it in front of your SWAT squad. That's even worse. None of the terrorists make fun of you. I mean, who wants that? Even, even their hostages are gonna sit there and make fun of you. It's just, just practice some rock climbing while you play this game. So fun story, Kemko fell to his death. <laughs> The sad thing is that was pretty much exactly what my experience with actual uh, repelling was like. It would be nice to actually understand. Well, 